Welcome back everybody and you caught me talking about rocks. For any of you that enjoyed my live feed the other day where I was talking about a rock type that I got to discover, this is it. This is a biotype breccia, but more importantly, we're gonna just be talking about the rocks that make up the rock, the minerals that make up the rock. Nerd here. And the minerals that were often associated with the bugs that were found around this biotite breccia. Cool thing is a breccia is a bunch of angular clasts. And you can see them all throughout the rock that are held together by a matrix. And what is neat is the matrix that's holding these rocks together, as you can see, is huge batches of biotite crystals. So this area right here was a giant vein, which is pretty cool. Once you'd pop apart these big old veins, you would see these awesome biotite books and these beautiful green apatite crystals, also associated with pyrite, chalcopyrite, and some other minerals inside of them. The most fascinating part about this is the apatite crystals, of course, those beautiful green crystals that you can see all throughout the rock. Now, apatite is a calcium phosphate mineral, also associated with fluorine. So it's a calcium phosphate, like fluorine mineral. And it's associated with other phosphate minerals like beryl and tourmaline, although tourmaline will not assume a terminated point and a six-sided version of termination in the crystal. Um, they're Confused sometimes with other minerals, and I forgot the mineral it is confused with. But apatite is something that also makes up our teeth. The enamel of our teeth is a calcium phosphate, in case you guys didn't know that. Apatite is a six, so is the hardness of our teeth, which is crazy. The other thing that's really cool about this particular rock is, oops, that's kind of falling apart a little bit. It has been out in the sunshine, so, you know, there's a little, little bit of issues. But it, the, the pyrite or chalcopyrite that is also associated in the veins, which is just a metal sulfide vein, because all of this happened with a lot of hydrothermal fluid. I mean, most minerals and secondary mineralization happen because of hydrothermal fluid, hydrothermal action. The rock gets split some form of fluid either coming upwards or meteoric water going down and dissolving the minerals over time and then pooling somewhere whether it goes up or down and then forms these beautiful crystals so i thought that that was an amazing feature in this you can also see on the back i should have got water out here i don't have any i'm not gonna lick the rock i'm sorry i was gonna spit on it but i figured that would be just completely inappropriate <laughs> but if you look at the back you can see the vein of apatite and biotite that cut the entire thing. Another cool thing that was associated with this rock type is, you can see right there, the bit of moly. So the molybdenum that also formed. And because this was a copper porphyry, molybdenum is often associated with uh, copper mines. Uh, you, they get copper credits. Or they get, excuse me, they get gold credits, silver credits, uh, and then they'll oftentimes be like a double mining process so you will have the copper process on one side and then the molybdenum process on the other and then sometimes when burning and purifying or drying out the molybdenum um, the vats that they dry it out in can get rhenium is what i believe it's called it's a rare earth mineral and uh, they used to collect it down at the sierrita mine uh, in green valley arizona now i don't know if they still do but i know that they used to Anyways, it was awesome to be able to just kind of catalog, find this rock type, and basically I wrote everything that there was to write about it in the mine. Um, it was something that they'd never seen there before. I got to track it down as far as it would with like drill holes and 3D models so that we could see how big it was because at the time when I was there, this was producing some of our highest copper content. So like percent by, by ton, this biotite breccia had the most copper in it, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And I, I was thrilled. My 
boss was a jerk. I mean, man, this guy, um, what we used to call him Pollyanna. And he was basically the type of boss that wanted to take credit for every single thing that you would do. And so one day, one of the higher ups came out to the mine and said, hey, I want to see that rock type that you're looking at. And basically, everyone knew that I was the one that had went out and found this and cataloged it. Sorry, I'm just moving my phone a little ways away. And that I knew everything that there was to know about it, where it was located, where it was going. And so uh, Pollyanna decided to go out with us and he didn't know Jack nothing about the rock type. Uh, neither did his little like miniature predecessor. Um, he kept confusing it, pyrite with calcopyrite and peacock ore. And I was like, we don't have bornite here. We don't have peacock ore at this mine. We have tarnished calcopyrite here. So I was talking with one of these guys that had come up from our corporate office and he knew, I knew what I was talking about. And the way that he laughed at my boss was one of those moments where you're like, this is karma in person. Anyways, short tangent, sorry for that. But one other cool feature, if you do look at the back of the rock and you see these giant clasts in it, some of these are just minerals. Like these guys are broken up giant pieces of feldspar, but they're all held together with biotite. And this has been tested. You name the test on this rock and it has been done just because it was something so unique for the area. You know, no one had ever seen it before. And I was thrilled just to, I got a couple pieces in the yard and it's pretty cool. Anyways, that, that is my tangent for by type breccia. I, I guess um, in a copper porphyry, you can get many different rock types. And in fact, there is never just one associated rock type with a copper porphyry. You can get um, quartz monzonites. You can get uh, any array of mafic minerals from your gabbros to your andesites or your, your mafic rocks, your mafic volcanics, excuse me. And then um, uh, your quartz diorites, your quartz monzonites, your, uh, and I'm, I'm blanking on the type of rocks right now, but th those are just a handful of some of them. And then within each rock type, there's certain associations of minerals because of the time frame that those rocks were deposited. And generally, there's not really too many unconformities or missing time within the mine, but you do get amazing intrusions like this one and faulted structures that allow for this type of mineral or this type of rock type as well. And what I believe was going on here is that this was specifically controlled between two different giant faults that were angled. And I, I believe that they messed up the rock so badly at depth that they broke up and then giant amounts of post-mineralization, which is all of these biotites um, and of course the, um, the calcium phosphate uh, fluorine, which makes up the appetite rushing in. So at some point there had to be enough uh, I guess, carboniferous rocks in the area in order for them to have the calcite or, or the, the calcium and the phosphorus. Otherwise, it just pushed it up from somewhere deep in the ground and deposited it in between each and every one of these little broken up clasts that were broken by these two giant faults. And when I say giant, I mean, yeah, my hands are small. I'm talking like a football field length in between these two huge faults that ran the entire vertical height of the mine. So... I hope you guys enjoyed just listening about my rock find. If you guys want to know more about this, I wrote a complete comprehensive article in the GPAA magazine, and I am uploading the PDF document of that article to my website. So you guys can go find it there and check out the article if you'd like to know more. Thanks for joining me. You guys caught me talking about rocks. I'll see you on the next one.